We are looking for the mayor. We talk to him every Tuesday morning at this time, and we wanted to talk about a few different things. And one of the things that we noticed was a press release came uh, came down late last week about the uh, Bright Lights Festival <laughs> and how the lights were uh, the final stage of the major displays were coming down this week. The big tree. And it's like, they're still up? It's the end of, it's almost March. Drew, are we one of those neighbors that leaves their Christmas lights up until the <laughs> summer and then takes them down? What's going on well, with this? You've got a $400,000 tree sitting in Jackson Park, and you want to make sure when you take it down, and it's a very complex structure to set up and to tear down. So when you when you take it down, you've got to make sure that the branches aren't frozen, that you're not damaging anything when you take it down. So they... They are finalizing that. It will be taken down, and the park will be fully opened in uh, in short order. And uh, you'll never know that Bright Lights was there until December of this year. Oh, good. So it's not like me where I throw everything, you know, and then the lights get in a big ball, and you try to... How, how big <laughs> is the Rubbermaid box you put the tree in? <laughs> <laughs> or is it an old Amazon box that was delivered? All yeah, right, so, okay. You know, those, those pieces are really expensive, and they're, yeah. and they're big, right? And, and you have to store them, so we have a, you know, a safe, dry place that we're storing it, and, and uh, they'll clean everything up. And be prepared to set it up in uh, December of this year. And we've already had the sort of the, the post bright lights meeting. Uh, looking forward to say, what do we want to add to make it more spectacular for 2018? So there's some great ideas out there, and I look forward to uh, to putting that plan together. Where will it be next year? Same place. Say so you're going to keep it at Jackson Park. Yes. For now, for good. Good to see. Hey, let's talk a little bit about policing. It looks like things may change, and uh, Windsor police officers uh, could be doing a, a little bit more work out in the county. Yeah, so this is really exciting. And, and so we responded to a request for proposal that the town of Amherstburg uh, put out a number of months ago, and they were looking for alternatives with respect to the delivery of their police service uh, in the town. And so at the end of the day, the city of Windsor, Windsor Police, were the only respondent to that RFP. And it was for a, a five-year deal at that time. And what you saw uh, when, we, when we actually unpacked the numbers and made the presentation is that we were going to save Amherstburg, the town of Amherstburg, over half a million dollars a year and provide them more effective policing. So instead of having to wait for emergency services or bomb squad from OPP or any of those things that they would have to call in from elsewhere, all of those things we have in the city of Windsor, and we're able to provide to Amherstburg really, you know, at, at a simple phone call. They can just request it, and we can be there if it had to be lights and sirens probably in 10 minutes, but certainly within 20 or 25 minutes we can be there as opposed to waiting hours for, for OPP services to come in. All so right. the, the good thing for the folks in the town of Amherstburg, what they were concerned about is, you know, losing sort of the town feel of their policing. We are keeping all of the same officers in the same cars, patrolling the same streets on the same shift, using the same police station, saving residents in that town half a million dollars a year, and they're getting enhanced service because they have access to all of our specialty services here in Windsor. So it's great for Amherstburg, but it's also great for the city of Windsor because those services that we provide, the, the expensive services, the specialty services, now we're spreading those costs over a larger, a larger number of people. And so everyone in Windsor will benefit from this deal as well. So it truly is a win-win uh, solution here. All right. One final thing. Do we have time? No, but oh, never go ahead mind. now. What, what, do you, what do you got for him? Drew, are we going to, there's been some complaints about snow removal. Are we going to look at that and make some changes? Uh, what, what specifically about what, Leah? Well, yeah, make it about, snow less? Yeah, make it snow less and clean the residential <laughs> roads more. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's, it would seem like it's a really simple thing to do. Uh, and this was, this was a weird storm, the last one that we had, but it would seem like it's a really simple thing to do. Uh, we're looking at ways to provide better service, but it, it also comes with a, with a significantly increased price tag if you start getting into having additional equipment and additional drivers uh, to be able to do separate, separate cleaning of residential streets and, or driveways. It, it even becomes more expensive or sidewalks. And so, you know, we can do whatever residents want us to do, uh, but there's a cost, uh, certainly and a big cost, to enhancing anything that we have when it comes to adding additional equipment or getting into sidewalk cleaning or the end of driveway cleaning. All right. Thanks very much, Drew. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. Windsor Mayor Drew Dilkins with us. It's 829.